there are times in life when things doesn't go so well, just like now. And to turn everything and turn everything into negative. Sensation, perception, relationship with ourselves and with others. How do we get out of the state of mind? That's true. Life is not always as a going up. There is also down. But what is your state of mind? You know, how do you take things? You know, when uh, everything is going fine in your life, you are happy. And when life reminds you that life is not just that, you become unhappy. You see, in life, we expect to be always joyful. But yet, have you transcend your mind? No. What makes life up and down is how we view life itself. It is our mental state. There were once, tell me a story, a monk. So that monk was always in the state of bliss. So the people around him were looking at him in a very high esteem. He was always praising him. They were praying to him. And they were looking up to him always. So one fine day, a girl, a young girl, came and started accusing that monk of having a child with her. So how quickly that joy and happiness that positivity, which they used to look at him, changed. That, that's why it is said, you know, in an admirer's mind, uh, judgment is hidden. And we don't know when they will jump out. But it is there. So that monk said, fine. It is my child. I'll take the child. And of course, everybody stopped uh, pointing finger towards him. So, next day, the monk, like usual, he went to collect alm. And of course, everybody stopped shouting at him, start blaming him. So he went from one door to the other. Everybody closed the door, refusing. So finally he reached in front of the house of the mother, of the mother's child. He was carrying the child. So please, I'm not asking something for me. At least give something for that baby. the father of that girl was very bitter she said so many harsh words to him how dare you came to this house to ask for what you have done so ah, like that but inside of the, of the girl the mother instinct you know hearing the cry of the baby could not hold it out of that she rushed and fell down at the feet of the monk and implored his forgiveness. Then she revealed to the father and to everybody that to hide the real father's identity 
I have a cues last month. Then everybody was wondering you know, why, you know, when they when you gave you the child, you didn't say anything. Why have you taken all this humiliation? Why have you not said that this is not my child? So the monk replied, said, look, you came, you are all very angry. You have burned my heart. You have called me by many names. You have already ruined my reputation. Why should it be for somebody else? You have burned one hut. Well, how many huts would you burn? You have ruined my reputation. How many reputation do you want to, have to, to ruin? So, he told me, I'm not bothered about you know, whether you praise me or you humiliate me. Your mind state is like that. When praises are there, you rejoice. When somebody humiliates you, you become sad. So, coming to the question, you know, how to go out of that state of mind. You see, if you let your mind dwell upon the goodness and the bad, if you see good, automatically bad will be there. There will be judgment. So if you keep the mind on that duality, you keep changing between good and bad, bad and good, you will never go out of that. So the transforming into the movement, the transforming of the mind. So what Juan said that your mind must become divine. He said in the Gita, a controlled mind is your best friend. An uncontrolled mind is your worst enemy. So how many minds did he, he talk about? How many minds do you have? Huh? One. Sure? <laughs> yes. Luckily you have only one mind. My question was, how many mind did God, do you have, sorry? E quindi la mia domanda è, quante menti avete? One. Uno. <laughs> God, I mean everything in pairs. Uno, Dio ha fatto tutto a coppie. Two eyes, nose, ears. Due occhi, due narici, due orecchie. Just mine, I've given you only one. Luckily. <laughs> Ma vi ho dato solo una mente, per fortuna. E tu hai dato due menti? Se gli avesse dato due menti? Tu would have said, one you keep for you, that's for you, God, and one I will do whatever I have to do. Avresti detto, ok, una te la tieni tu, Dio, e una o l'altra faccio quello che voglio. So that's why, you see, transforming of the mind not just controlling of the mind, not just saying that the mind has to be good, you know, because if you focus only on the good, you will be, you will be bad also. That's why those which is absorbed into the divine, the mind must transform into divine itself. And that's what will bring the transformation from your limitation who you call you into that divine self. Ah. And like Krishna said, mind which is controlled is your best friend. So when it is not controlled, it's your worst enemy. Not even very simple enemy, but the worst kind. So by controlling your mind, by focusing upon your divine quality inside of you. That state, you know, will transform. So you will not be in that dual quality between good and bad, hate and cold and so on. 
your mind will be centered into the blissful state, Satchidananda. That is your true being in itself. Questo è buono, è il vostro vero essere. When you dive within your heart, there is no the sound of the outside. There is this calmness. There is this silence inside of it. Which nothing can, no storm of the outside can change it. And this is the blissful state, the state of beatitude, you know, that doesn't play yo-yo with you up and down. That's why when we're talking about love, you know, what is love? That's why I asked in Bari also. Love is not something that today is here, tomorrow is not here. That is emotion. Love is something that keeps growing. And it is, there is nothing higher than love. So nowadays when we call love, you know, today you love somebody, tomorrow it disappears, you don't even know who that person is. And that's what people call love. You know how many people have seen like that? <laughs> so understand, you know, if you want to, to transcend that state, you have to dive into the ocean of love. And to dive into the ocean of love, you must be uh, what you have to be. You don't need to be a businessman. You know, because we like to do business, huh? In everything that we do, we do business. You know, even in love we do business. You have to be a gambler. So if you're not a gambler in love, you will never achieve. Brave. No. She says brave, courageous. Gambler is a brave person. <laughs> you saw people sitting in the what is it? Casino, how they ruin themselves? <laughs> <laughs> they ruin themselves completely. Sometimes even they close on them. You know, they go out without clothes. <laughs> they are completely empty. <laughs> That's why you must be a gambler in love. Per questo bisogna essere uno scommettitore, un giocatore d'arte nell'amore. If you are a businessman, you will fail. Se siete uomini d'affari, fallirete. That's why he says if you adventure into that ocean of love, per you have to take, you have to have that gut to jump into it. Per fare. And that is perché l'amore consuma tutto e questo è l'amore di Dio dentro di me. Are you strong to do that? Siete forti per fare questo? Do you still want him? Lo volete ancora? Yes. Or it's just words? Non sono solo parole. People love words, no? Le parole piacciono, le persone piacciono le parole. And they do business with God, you know, thinking that God doesn't know. I'm bringing my candle there, you know. God, I love you. <laughs> they fight with laughing. They fight with laughing. Do you know what is love? Do you know what is love? You love me only when you have everything you want, you know me. The moment your life is good, you are happy. Do you have time to remember me? <laughs> well, this is, you see, What you talk about right now is an expression of what you feel inside of you. Tomorrow, the same person 
tell you something that you don't want to hear. Okay? The person that you love tells you, no, I don't love you anymore, I love somebody else. Would you still do the same thing for that person? No, you change. So, it's not about how I see it. You know? I'm just talking in general about things. You know? Of course, love is an expression also. You like to express your feeling, you like to show the people around that you appreciate them. You know? So, yes, you know, you're right when you're saying that uh, it's an expression. When we love God, also we have to express ourselves. Now we always uh, I think it's a relationship what we build. So in uh, building a relationship, there's always an expression into it. So you express, but you have to understand also what we call love. It varies always. It doesn't stay the same. You know, in the morning. You wake up, your beloved is next to you, darling, Nana, I love you, you bring the, I say, breakfast in bed, beautiful, everything goes nicely. Just tell to your beloved something that the beloved doesn't want to hear. We will see how the love transforms. Do something challenge that the love, to know how much that the love love you. Earlier you were saying the motherly love also what I understand a little bit about, no? the expression of mother's love. Of course, mother's love is considered one of the highest form of love. You know? But yet, within that mother's love there is still expectation into that. You know, love is not really, we don't express the love in a very unconditional way. Love is unconditional. Love is selfless. Whatever we do must be selfless. Whether you are making the chair for your beloved, whether you buy something beautiful for your beloved, it must be selfless without any expectation into that. And yes, if that expression of love is with unconditional, you know, and when it is without any expectation behind that, yes, then it is beautiful. Then you can do so many things. There are many people who do it. And you observe nature itself. There is an unconditional love, you know, but it is also giving. The tree unconditionally gives its shade. You know, the sun is giving its light. Rain is falling unconditionally on everybody. There is no expectation. Our nature in itself is to give. Unconditionally. But whether we reach to that level of living unconditionally or not, that is different. But in deepness, when we talk about love, it's about having this relationship. And of course, in the relationship, you express. You know, you can't just be without any expression. But that expression is, I am happy for your happiness. Can you say that? I am happy for your happiness? No, everybody says I am happy, I want to be happy for myself. Very rare. One will say I am happy for you. I want you to be happy. Whatever I am doing, I want you to be happy. Parents will say to their children, Whatever I am doing, I want you to achieve great things. 
Yes or no? But there's an expectation behind that. You have to be how I want you to be. Not how you are. That's why it, in Lord Krishna always praise the gopi. They love him, not for their sake. They love him for his sake. So whatever they do was for his sake. And this is an expression of love. When you forget yourself, 